Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning and welcome to the lecture series Introduction to Interaction Design. In the previous session, we discussed uh, scenarios and personas, how they help in identifying the goals and also uh, understanding the user better so that designers can uh, prepare better final output and a better experience for them. So, in today's uh, session, we will see design and prototyping that how uh, what are the steps for design and prototyping? So, uh, now we are moving from uh, in this double diamond technique to the next diamond. So, we have spent uh, a bit of time on the previous diamond and now we are coming to this phase of the diamond. Now, where the problem has been identified and it has been defined. So, now how do we develop and uh, deliver further? So, there are uh, several steps involved in the prototyping uh, procedure. So, prototyping is required because we want to test out first before we come up with the final design. So, we can test it for some potential problems or some challenges. So, the first uh, step here is ideation. So, ideation is uh, an activity, a brainstorming activity which helps us generate uh, many uh, potential solutions. So, we will discuss all of these in detail in the upcoming slides as well. The next is the mood board. So, mood board is uh, like a collage of ideas, it could be colors, uh, textures or other inspirations which help uh, set the mood for our design. The next is sketching. So, uh, sketching is the primary uh, activity wherein we make illustrations or certain quick sketches. So, it is a very uh, uh, simple exercise which saves our time and also helps us generate a lot of ideas. Information architecture can be understood like a hierarchy of how the architecture of our design. So, for example, if we are designing an application, a mobile application, then what will be the architecture of it? So, how will the user uh, access it and what are the steps that they will be taking? So, next is low fidelity prototype. So, once we are done with the previous steps, we start putting all this information into a low fidelity prototype, which is a very basic and low cost uh, solution or uh, a model. So, which can be on paper, cardboard or any such similar products. So, then uh, testing and uh, feedback is the next step where we uh, recruit certain participants and we see uh, generate scenarios to see that what is their feedback. If there are any improvements or any problems that were found, so then we incorporate the uh, in the next stage which is the iteration stage where we re uh, refine the design. And finally, we prepare the high fidelity prototype which almost resembles the real uh, mobile application for example. And after the high fidelity prototype stage, we again conduct the uh, user uh, study because there might be some other gaps as well. So, once that is uh, addressed, then the final uh, design is ready. So, we can see this is the uh, prototyping model. Here, we can see we started from the data. So, of course, I am not mentioning the data because we have discussed that uh, in the previous lectures that how do we gather data, how do we analyze data. So, we are now taking that data forward to utilize into our prototype. So, once we take the data, then we go into the ideation stage, which is uh, which I mentioned, which was the brainstorming stage. And then from there, we go to the mood board stage. So, where now we will collect inspiration for our work. Then we will start putting it into the form of the sketch and then we will design the information architecture. From there, we go to the low fidelity prototyping, uh, paper modeling or uh, cardboard or something simple. And then 
testing with the participants and now this cycle is complete, but if we want we may go again back into the cycle uh, one more time. If the designer themselves feel that we need to address one aspect one more time, when the satisfaction has been achieved then we go on to the high fidelity prototyping uh, stage and then the final user testing is conducted which will tell us about if there are still any more gaps remaining. If not, then we can go to the development stage. So, uh, the ideation stage uh, has certain techniques that how do we ideate. Now, brainstorming is just one of the techniques, but there are several other techniques that help uh, the uh, researcher, the designer uh, come up with uh, number of ideas uh, which later we will see that which one is working uh, in the most ideal manner and which we should take forward. So, uh, first is the mind map. So, mind map is a graphical uh, technique. So, we can see here like if this is the uh, problem, then we this is in the middle of the page. So, we write the problem in the middle of the page and then we write the solution and ideas that may come to the mind on the uh, same page. So, it is like uh, we are branching out into what can be the possible uh, solutions and then we uh, connect those together with the help of connectors and then also nodes. So, it is similar to say maybe a map of a city. So, where we have a one uh, central business uh, uh, district and then there are certain other areas smaller pockets which are connected to it. So, similarly this is the mind map for the problem that we need to find the solution for. The next uh, technique is brainstorming. So, brainstorming is a uh, activity that one can use in a small group or a large group and what is the beauty of this particular method is that all types of opinions are welcome. So, here there is no type of uh, pulling someone down or laughing at some idea because every idea is considered to be important and every idea is welcome. So, uh, this is a, a nice uh, safe uh, space, a safe activity where even the craziest of uh, ideas is welcome and people do not uh, shy uh, away from participating in this activity. Now, next is uh, brain writing. So, brain writing is also quite similar to the brainstorming activity. So, here the, the participants uh, write down their ideas on the paper and then after a few minutes they pass uh, this paper to the other participant. Then that participant uh, you know will elaborate, uh, they will write uh, something in connection with the previous idea and then the same paper will go to the next participant and so on. So, after a few minutes this paper is uh, collected and then uh, this paper is then posted for a discussion because now everybody can see that uh, all the different ideas that were generated from uh, the brain of uh, all the people who were present in that room. Now, uh, storyboarding can help uh, bring a situation to uh, life. So, it can show what happens over time and explore the dynamics of the situation. So, we can use storyboarding uh, technique to empathize with people better and to also understand their lives a little better. So, it is like putting the story together on a board. So, we can draw out these stories. So, in the uh, past uh, few lectures also we saw that how stories communicate uh, the information in a very, very efficient manner and people are able to memorize them because you know story is something that we have been listening to since we were children from our grandmothers and then it is a nice way to retain in our memory. So, uh, when we put down somebody's uh, story, so their pain points are you know expressed and we can then actually empathize that at this stage what were the challenges, at the next stage what happened, uh, how the people treated him or whatever the case may be. So, storyboarding is a visual uh, representation of uh, the particular participant or the particular problem that we are dealing with. Now, uh, provocation is a lateral thinking uh, uh, technique 
which challenges the status quo and allows us to explore new realities in uh, an extreme uh, degree. So, uh, lateral thinking uh, distances itself from the classic method from problem solving where we work out the solution step by step, but in this particular method we uh, may not follow the step by step uh, steps of problem solving, but we may, we may deviate from it and we may find inspiration from a very uh, unknown source altogether. So, now a uh, mood board is uh, like I said it is a, a visual representation, it is a collage of different images. So, we can take inspiration uh, now a very uh, simple inspiration can be from a magazine or from some newspaper, some article, we can go on the web and get some pictures. So, we uh, can put up some it in the hierarchy of colors or textures. So, mood board helps us to communicate that what will be the mood of our product. So, it helps us set the mood. So, whether it will be enthusiastic, whether it is say if it is regarding a meditation or some kind of uh, uh, similar uh, uh, technique, then maybe we want to represent calmness, then we will use certain colors. If we uh, want something to be uh, maybe say adventure sports, then it will have more energy, it will have more enthusiasm. So, what colors, what textures uh, will help in doing so? So, that is important. And this uh, serves as a source of inspiration for the designers to come up with an atmosphere which is cohesive. So, something which uh, something where we do not have different moods for the same idea, but everything needs to come together. So, even the font style uh, if it is calm then what kind of uh, font we will use. So, even those details will be important here. So, this provides a visual uh, interest, it also sets the mood, then it helps in a collaboration. Also, when the client comes over and we are uh, communicating with them that what is it that we are putting together after hearing their requirements. So, it also helps us to communicate with them. So, they get to see the direction in which we are moving forward. And uh, so, also at the same time it uh, has to be like I said visually consistent. So, it cannot have uh, inconsistent elements. Now, sketching is the process of creating rough illustrations, sketches, ideas. So, this is also a visual representation and at this stage we are looking for several ideas. So, uh, for example, if I want to design say uh, spectacles, so then I will come up with many different uh, designs of spectacles. They may be round, they may be square, they may be triangular, they may be rectangle, the you know it may be uh, you know without the frame, it may be with the frame, thick frame, thin frame. So, all of those ideas I will generate with the help of uh, sketching exercise and then uh, of course, it is a different process altogether, but then from there maybe I will select a final uh, design of the spectacle. So, similarly here also we start with uh, designing a uh, lot of ideas, lot of uh, uh, ideas that we are also generating from the uh, mood board and the previous uh, you know techniques that we have used and it helps us in uh, visual thinking because uh, when we are uh, thinking for a solution then just words will not be enough, but we need to put it on paper or it could also be a digital medium. At the same time, it also is a very quick exercise. So, sketching is very fast and it will not take much time rather than going to the computer and designing it and then uh, demolishing the whole design, the sketching activity is very quick and fast. And also sketching helps us to document the whole procedure of our problem. So, how we started and how have we taken it forward and where have we reached. So, this whole process can also be documented in a very 
uh, in a very uh, nice uh, manner. So, once we have our sketching done, so we can start designing our information architecture. So, just like any building has a certain architecture, so we design that where will we have the door, from where it will be connected to the next room, then where will be the kitchen, where will be the uh, bathroom. So, similarly in a digital space, so we will also design this uh, information architecture with the hierarchy of the uh, requirements. So, once the user lands onto our say mobile application, how will he navigate? So, how will he move around? What are the uh, important uh, steps? What are the important actions that he will need to take over some other actions? So, it is a structural uh, design, we can think of it as a structural design and an organizational way of putting the information together. So, uh, it uh, helps us to communicate and put together the uh, information, so that we can categorize it, so that it is logical, intuitive and also it is uh, user centered. So, once we are done with our information architecture, then we come on to our low fidelity prototype. So, low fidelity prototype, uh, we can see some examples here on the screen that they can be made uh, with the help of uh, sketching on paper, pencil or uh, you know a tablet or similar digital field. It can also be done on a template. So, there are several templates that are available where the user has the flexibility of moving the things around. So, uh, it involves using basic tools and materials to quickly and inexpensively visualize the design concepts without focusing on the details. So, right now at this stage, we are just putting all our information that we have created in the information architecture stage and we are not worried about say details that how will the button be clicked, what, what is the uh, exact color of the button. So, we are just organizing the information in this space. So, the main purpose of low fidelity prototype is to come up with uh, uh, getting feedback, validating the ideas and also to explore other designs before we start working on the final development, because a significant amount of time and money goes into the final uh, design product. So, for testing and feedback, this is a very crucial component when it comes to our, the design process and it helps us evaluate and refine the design solutions. So, here we recruit participants. And then like you can see in the image here that the uh, cards or the template of the mobile uh, application is being placed in front of the uh, participant. So, so now it will, it is like a little act that we are going to work on. So, wherein the landing page or the first page of the website or the application is presented to the participant and then he is given a certain task. So, a scenario is created that for example, you are booking a vacation. So, how will you go about booking the vacation on this application? So, the user, uh, the participant will say, okay, I will press this button. So, then we present him or her with the uh, screen that will uh, emerge once that button is pressed and so on. So, we will see that how easily is the user able to uh, access uh, or book his tickets or what are the uh, challenges that he is facing. So, so we keep on noting them down while the user is performing this test with us. So, we can also observe while this activity is going on that maybe this route is much larger, maybe this route needs to be shortened. So, how can we do that? So, all of these uh, uh, valuable uh, insights is what the user testing provides to us. So, once we have the uh, feedback from the user testing and uh, we have noted down the problems that the user may have encountered or certain routes that were long from our own observation. So, now we will create a high fidelity prototype. So, high fidelity prototype is uh, almost like what the real application will look like. So, 
now we have a uh, techniques softwares uh, like figma and uh, uh, many others wherein we can uh, actually create a demo application that if we press how will we go to the next page or how do we enter our name and then click ok and what uh, happens next. So, we can uh, see that uh, almost like a real final developed product. So, it uh, provides the user a more detailed experience, a more immersive experience because the user feels like he or she is actually using the final pro uh, prototype or final uh, design. Now, we use uh, sketch or Adobe XD or Figma which is a collaborative tool. So, some of these softwares are used to design these high fidelity prototypes. Uh, so, many steps like we have seen that there is an exhaustive list of steps. So, sometimes user testing may be overlooked, but uh, user testing and feedback the final one after the high fidelity prototype is something that one should uh, not miss. So, it is crucial to the performance and success of a uh, final application and it is uh, something that we should be doing throughout the process. So, there is no such rule that only once this step is done we can conduct a user testing. Whenever the designer uh, may feel that I need to get this assessed or checked, so at that time the user testing can be conducted. So, uh, overall the user testing uh, process helps us eliminate any kinds of uh, problems or any kind of uh, bugs that uh, there may be in the system and also to optimize the, the user experience for the application. So, this uh, brings us to the end of uh, today's session and in the next session we will continue uh, to take uh, today's uh, discussion forward and we will see with the help of a case study that how all of these steps when they are put together, how does it uh, appear. So, I will see you in the next uh, class, uh, thanks and bye.